Oh, you savage, brutal sea, you rip-roaring winds, how can you so suddenly change from the calm and innocent balmy days of last week? Last week at Ilfracombe in North Devon, you couldn't have been nicer. Just a touch of breeze, a beautiful blaze of sun, and an optimism in the air that in the reckless breeds a spirit that can lead to disaster. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep, so beware, sailor, beware. Yes, beware, sailor, the weather can change here in a couple of ticks. But it's all right today, and safely aboard the polar bear, there's no doubt that we'll be in Lundy in time for lunch. It's a tough old ship, is the polar bear, and a strange name, perhaps, for a ship in these parts, but it used to be an icebreaker in the frozen north. But here, in the Bristol Channel, all it's likely to have to crack is the odd 40-gallon drum. The polar bear is absolutely essential to Lundy. There is a helicopter service to the island, of course, but it takes a fair old tonnage of food each week to keep the island alive. After all, over 20 people live there permanently, and scores of people spend their holidays there, so the supplies have got to get through. And by all accounts, it's far from being what is sometimes called a nice little doddle. That strip of water twixt the mainland and the island can be most treacherous. Skipper, there's no sort of pier to land on in Lundy, is there? There's no pier over in Lundy, no. We just land on, um, well, it must probably be a barge this morning. Yeah. It's a barge that uh, works on the beach. He's got wheels and comes alongside as well. They load the trailers in there. But you'll see the arrangement when you get over to the island. Does it ever happen that you can't land? Oh, quite often, yeah, especially with this sort of easterly wind, uh, anything round the east side or north side of the island, then you have trouble over there landing, any strength of wind. You two winds land. round the west or anywhere round west, southwest, and it's completely sheltered. Yeah. Landing anywhere then. Do you ever turn around and come back? Mm, yeah, we have see done. You I've done it twice, I think, in four years. Turn yeah. around and come back again. So then, how often do you go a week? Uh, three times a week in the summer. Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. And then twice a week in the winter. Tuesday and Friday. And there, a couple of hours later, lies Lundy. A long slab of plain, solid granite. Without a harbour, without a pier or landing stage. The landing of provisions and people is not easy and the wind, they say, is freshening. You can see that the landing craft confirms that the wind is freshening as it nods its way towards us. It is a slightly sick-making motion. Not that I've ever suffered the old mal de mer in my life, but to be frank, I'm no great lover of boats. Well, I just do not like their instability and the way they feel to be in a permanent state of skid. And that irritating perpetual motion that they transmit to everything and everybody do terribly get on the nerves. However, it does look as though we'll be able to get ashore today, as long as the wind doesn't get too fresh. Of course, if one did this every day, you'd think nothing of it. But as it is, I don't do it every day, and I'm thinking quite a bit about it. I just need reassuring. Well done, old man, and the best of luck. Be careful not to slip down between the polar bear and the landing craft. <laughs> Makes an awful mess of the old ribs, you know. <laughs> Still, we'll get the vegetables all first, and you can come after. Right. Cauliflowers and upside-down grapefruit first. Now, I do hope that they've remembered to order everything. Well, there's all sorts of things you can be stuck on an island without. An India rubber, for instance. I mean, suppose you wanted to rub out something and you hadn't got a rubber. Where would you be? Up the spout. There's a thousand and one things you could find you were without. I did pack a razor, didn't I? Come on, it's your turn now. Don't let them see that you're as nervous as a kitten. Wait for the boat to come up. That's it, well done. Easy, wasn't it? Oh, you have to be agile for this sort of caper. You would never ever have made a good pirate, would you? Scrambling about the rigging, leaping from ship to shore. Well, that's what used to go on here. For Lundy was once 
the pirate's paradise. Now steady, steady. Oh dear. Are you all right? Whoop. The Vikings used Landy as a base for their raids on the mainland. Pirates brought their booty and shared it out here. A most exciting life to follow, if you like that sort of thing. But who would want to lead a life of the old heave-ho all the year round, being chucked about like a rat doll? But the getting of something for nothing has its attractions. The pirates obviously did themselves pretty well, for the Bristol Channel was bobbing with ships of all nations. Every so often, the pirates were attacked and cleared off the island, but like garden weeds, they were back within a matter of months. And if it wasn't the pirates, the smugglers were here. Brandy for the parson, backy for the clerk. And the wind gets fresher and fresher. As the forecast said, it's blowing full blast force nine. Well, shall we brave the gale? Yes, no, yes, no, yes. Well, I'd rather be on dry land than being aboard you. And so, from the super comfort of the Milcombe guest house, get going, Heathcliff. Get going. They do say that in fine weather, Lundy is absolutely beautiful, as well it might be. But in fair weather and foul, it has attracted all manner of interesting individuals. Fair ones and foul ones. Well, you can assert yourself on an island. You can be king of the castle for a time. But it doesn't last. It's ever-changing. There's always someone just a bit stronger and a bit younger to take over. But perhaps there's a calm and prosperous future ahead for Lundy. Not so long ago, its prospects were not very sure. And it was put up for sale. A most generous gift of £150,000 from Mr. Jack Haywood helped the National Trust to buy Lundy and they handed the administration over to the Landmark Trust. It is the Trust's intention to preserve the island and restore it to the respectable state it was in, in its prosperous times. It is a most worthy intent, for you can never tell what will happen to an island should it fall into the hands of the unscrupulous. And in the distant past, there have been some really lovely boys who got their hands on Landy and played havoc all round. It was sold in the 18th century for as little as 510 pounds. And it was lost in a game of cards for 4,500 pounds. It was proposed at one time to turn it into a sort of Monte Carlo or a gambling hell, as it was called. But thankfully, its ownership remained in the hands of decent, reasonable men and barring earthquakes, Lundy should be safe and sound forever. Well, that's pleasant news. And now perhaps you'd be good enough to tell us something about that gun. Hoi. Well, you know, when a northeaster blows here, they say that this is the sheltered part of the island, although we've got a job to know. This place is called the Battery, of course, on account of the gun here. These weren't so much put up to defend the island, but uh, they were put up as a sort of a fog warning. They used to fire these off when the island was shrouded in fog and the old light up on the top there was not visible. They used to bang these off every so often to warm the ships. It's a nice part of the island. It's the home of the few remaining puffins that live here. Uh, over there, although there's none visible at the moment, I expect they're safely down in their little burrows and I can hardly blame them. There's also a lot of kittiwakes here, some guillemots and razorbills, but they seem to have gone into shelter too. A little further up the island is the other landing place. We landed on the west side. On the east side, the west landing place is called Pyramid Rock, a little further to the north. Although with weather conditions like this, it's doubtful whether we'll ever get off this island, I don't know. And if it feels like it, the wind can blow and blow for days and days on end. And the surging sea holds everyone prisoner on this lump of craggy granite. And there is absolutely nothing that anyone can do about it. You're locked up, banged up. And all you can do is to get your little handbook on philosophy for beginners and stick it out. It's best to keep moving about, really, and show yourself to the sea and wind, just to demonstrate that you don't care what they do. Come on, you're not trying. You're not half as bad as you were yesterday. <laughs> They've got their tabs on you, you know, up at the lighthouse. 
Heartland, uh, Lundy, uh, good afternoon, uh, the Met, uh, how, how many please, over? Good afternoon, sir, yes, you're clear, over. Thank you, station 702, uh, 70245, 64022, 00603, and Wingos, 55, 55 knots, okay, over. Yeah, it is a bit breezy. Okay then, till next time then. Cheers, come in. Oh, I couldn't understand what all those figures meant. What did they mean? It's coded. It's the present weather conditions just sent through as a coded message. Yeah. The numbers. Uh, there's a card over there which um, tells you exactly what it is. The fellow at the other end uh, will be able to decipher it. The um, steady wind is about 45, 40 to 45 knots. Yeah gusting up to 55. Well now I'd call that dirty weather. Would it you? is rather mucky, yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> um, it's getting up the severe gale. Is it? Because that can go on for days, can't oh, it? Oh it can do, yeah. You can get used to it, of course. Well you've got to. <laughs> That's what the job's all about. I suppose in this job if you're gonna go balmy, you go balmy early on, do you Tom? I think so, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Yes, we won't go into that one because those are how I am anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really going to do that. It is true, of course, that a constant wind can drive you around the spiral staircase in time. In certain parts of the world, the murder rate actually increases after the wind has been blowing for a while. People just blow their minds. You can't kill the wind, so you've got to kill something. Well, you can't go on feeling inferior day after day after day, for there is no doubt you do feel very feeble and inferior in a blast like this. The great thing is not to let your anxiety get the better of you, for there must be many here now wondering whether the beer is going to hold out. And still it blows at a steady 50 knots. It's as though someone has put an enormous electric whisk in the sea and lathered up this incredible foam. Great dollops of white of egg beaten up for a mammoth meringue. But still the wind won't leave it alone. It scatters it all over the place and it flutters away like butterflies. The Lundy butterflies, that's what they call them. There's no peace to be had when the Lundy butterflies are flying, flying in the northeasterly gale. You'd stand no chance in a boat out there once you got close to the land, and many's the brave old bark that's been blown ashore and battered to smithereens on these brutal rocks. Well, mercifully, there are places where you can get out of the wind because out there it's a force nine gale and just in here there's a, a gentle lilt of wind. And here, of course, it's sheltered and the flowers are growing. And, of course, this incredible splurge of gorse. What a lovely colour it is. The gorse is just sheltered enough where it is to miss the worst of the winds but the church there bears the brunt of the weather from north, south, east and west, and it survives. And you're just about surviving, aren't you? Not a tree in sight, and yet you found some wood. <laughs> You've got to learn to look after yourself on Landy, for there are times when the weather does its damnedest to put you out. Finding a load of kindling wood is just like picking up a five pound note. You can say that again. That wasn't a fiver, was it? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> don't do that every day, mate. You don't. And this is High Street, Landy. Not wildly busy this morning, but it's early yet. The old granite buildings were quarried on this island, and so they have, in fact, probably been here for millions of years, one way or another. <laughs> and you've been here for a few years too, haven't you? the old Ferguson. Ah, but things are stirring. The general stores and post office are open. And who knows, there may be some panic buying going on in case the polar bear doesn't arrive for a couple of months. Well, you never know. 
Oh, yes. Now, we must send a card or two. Hmm. Quite a nice selection. Let's see. Oh, yes, there's one of the first-class battleship, the Montague, that was wrecked on Lundy. 14,000 tons of iron jammed on the rocks and ultimately smashed up. Little mistakes you make at sea can be most expensive. Now, if the rough weather keeps on and on, there's plenty of reading material here, so that's a good thing. Have you seen any puffins? No. You haven't seen any puffins? I haven't seen any puffins yet. It's interesting because there's puffins on the stamps of these cards, isn't there? See, you can buy the cards here and they're already stamped. That's good, isn't it? So there we are. We've got two cards. We'll send them off. If the polar bear comes in tomorrow, they should be uh, on the mainland uh, mm -hmm. by Monday, wouldn't they? It'd be delivered by Monday. How much do you owe love? Fifty. There we are. Give you six. Thanks very much. Right, right I'll, I'll come back. <laughs> You've got pretty well everything, haven't you? Oh, yes, I think so. Well, if we haven't got it, we try and get it for yeah. the next time the boat comes in. We next usually, time the boat comes in. <laughs> Tomorrow, eh? Well, sometimes it can be yeah. four days, five days. But yeah. Usually it's sort of Depends three times a week. Depends on the weather. It all depends on the weather. At times, you could imagine that you were up in the Klondike, rushing about for gold. I wonder if the polar bear will come in today. Lundy Island. Good morning. What have you decided? Uh, oh, yes. So, have you got a forecast for tomorrow? Oh. Okay, fine. Right, O Denver. Bye-bye. Bye. It's not coming. Yeah, of course, you need the polar bear to bring the heavy supplies over. Yes, we you? must yeah. retain the polar bear um, in order to get the supplies here. It can, but unfortunately, it can only take 12 passengers, which is um, a pity. In the winter, of course, we need a ship which can uh, come over in fairly bad weather. Yeah. And also, we need to get building materials here so that the restoration work, which Landmark Trust are carrying out on the island, can go ahead. But you do need fair weather. A fine day like this, they can land building supplies and carry on with the good work. And the work they're doing is pretty good. Things are now beginning to look like this, when once upon a time, they looked like this. The Landmark Trust was set up by Mr. and Mrs. John Smith in order to um, preserve buildings which they believe should be preserved for posterity. If they were going to be destroyed or mutilated, mm. take these buildings over, restore them, and then let them to holidaymakers, and any rent that they get from these properties are used to maintain them so that future generations can also enjoy these buildings which should be saved for the nation. That was Colonel Rob Gilliatt, Chief of Administration here. And this castle is known as Marisco Castle, after a gentleman of that name who occupied Landy in the 13th century. He behaved so badly and defied the king that he was eventually hung, drawn and quartered. But the castle was actually built, it's believed, by Henry III, so that villains could no longer ignore the monarch. After all, once you'd established a foothold here, it would take a pretty powerful force to get you ousted. Well, this is what islands do to some people, so do be careful. Well, a certain Mr. Benson, it must be remembered, leased Lundy and got up to all sorts of crafty little tricks here. He smuggled away like mad, and it's thought that he built this cave to store away his contraband. You know, you can get blown overboard here if you're not careful. As you can see, it's quite a well-placed cave with quite an imposing entrance for a cave. Mr. Benson was far from dark. Now, dear Mr. Benson leased Lundy in the 18th century. 
And compared to other 18th century crooks, you know, he really got a good head and shoulders start of them because he was an MP and a politician. And so he had access to a lot of information that perhaps other people wouldn't have. And one of his favorite tricks, which he perpetuated for years and years and years, was such a simple one and so good. He had a contract to transport convicts to America, to the penal colonies over there. And he got the boats and sent them off. Uh, but they never got there. Uh, where do you think they got? Would you believe Lundy? Yeah, that's as far as they got. He shipped them off at Lundy and he made them work for him. And he did, they did all sorts of buildings. They built the walls all around the place. Some of them got away, but not very many of them. And he kept this up for years and years and years until he was eventually discovered. Not only that, did he do that? He was a great smuggler. He smuggled all sorts of stuff. This great cave he built and put all his stuff in here. He did an incredible shore insurance racket where he sank ships out there and claimed the insurance. As I say, he was a lovely boy. A lovely boy. But like all crooks, he was full of justification for his actions. When he was charged with not delivering the convicts to America, he said, but England does not want the convicts. What does it matter where they go? Lundy is as good a place as any. Yes, but about 3,000 miles short of America, the mileage of which Mr. Benson no doubt calculated in his original estimate. No doubt about it. Mr. Benson had plenty of time to think up lots of dirty tricks in this dirty weather. Well, the residents who live here must be used to it by now, as are the animals that live here. Just as well they've got a fair bit of hay left, for there are some interesting ponies here. Between New Forest and Welsh ponies, and known as Lundy ponies. A breed that was introduced by Mr. when he owned Lundy. Oh, you poor old dears, standing with your backs into a gale force eight. Stick it out, won't you? Yes, well, I think there's only one place on the island where you can linger now. And you know where that is, don't you? The Morisco Tavern. Yeah, you get some rough old weather down here, don't you? Oh, yeah, sometimes. Weather changes so quickly. Mm. You know, like yesterday was a really nice day. Beautiful. Woke up this morning hoping to go fishing. And, you know, white horses all over the sea. I can see up there. Pickled gull's eggs, a shilling. Ah, uh, yes, that's an old sign I found right in the shed. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be doing it again this year. Bit early at the moment. Well, what time would they be laying then? Um, well, a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, and they should be laying. Yeah. And then we'll go around and farm them. Yeah. And you pickle them? Yes, just boil them and pickle them. Just the same as chicken's eggs, eh? Yes, exactly the same. Yeah. The only difference is they're slightly larger. Mm. You, you, have you lived on the island a long time? Just over a year now. Yeah. yeah. Where, where do you come from? Um, Bristol. Yeah. Oh, I see. We used to come here on holiday for a couple of years. And then I, we decided we'd like to come and live here. So we just kept writing and writing to the island. Yeah. And in the end, they gave us a job. We couldn't believe it. But of course, quite a few arrive at Landy, and they can't believe it either. The life belts of some of the ships that have been wrecked here. Well, at least we are safe and sound, and warm and dry. That's something. Still, we mustn't give up hope, must we? Can't stay like this forever. Let's look on the bright side and post up postcards. They might get there. They might.